I am unashamed. What about you? We got permission, Al. We got permission? Do we? Oh, yeah, we got permission. Uh, I mean, Jace, let me say this. Well, let me just sa- announce it before you say anything. We're, I'm so, super excited well, today. No, I mean, you don't want to give the end. <laughs> Yeah, Before lead us, lead us up to it. Right, you got to have a. It's got to look. We're in the we're in the entertainment business, so you got to have the thing out there that, that just uh, so unashamed ready. nation. So you'll know what we're talking about. I walked in this morning. Jay said the verdict is in. I didn't know what that could mean. A lot of things around here. The verdict could have been a good you, hunt, and you, and you have no other context. You and Phil have no other context for that, right? Right, exactly. And so then y'all were talking a little bit, and I realized the verdict, the thing I've been waiting to hear, has happened. The seatbelt. Paper has now been resolved. It has come to its conclusion. In a story. Which is good news either way, because I know a lot of people are sick of hearing about <laughs> it. But this is, I mean, but this is the end of the story. We have a conclusion. I actually stumbled upon the conclusion early because I called Jace on, was it Saturday? Yeah, you called me just about something else. No, you called me the day it happened. So that would have been Friday. You, you, you literally called me after I walked out of the courthouse. And let's just say there was an energy, I'm not going to say if it was a negative or positive energy, <laughs> but there was a, a palatable, strong energy coming out of Jace. Uh, well, that's been obvious because we've, we've touched on this for several podcasts. Well, so. yeah. Phil got wind of it and you asked me a question. You remember what you asked me, Phil? Did, did you win? <laughs> you, you had something else to that. You said, did you win or lose? <laughs> And do you remember? <laughs> do you remember what my response? Fighting the government, I had my. I house. mean, hands up or down. It's like, of course, that's the. Well, you said, did did you win or lose? And do you remember what I answered? <laughs> Phil shaking his head, no. <laughs> I said yes. Oh, you said yes to both. I said yes if, to both. Yep. I said actually, if you would have said, did you lose or win? The answer is yes. So here's what happened. There's this is a leave this, it to Jace to not <laughs> to not have a simple answer to this question. This is very complex, and and most of our I am shocked that something happened to you is complex. I actually think you're going to find what I'm fixed to tell you very hard to believe. They were saying you were guilty of breaking the law. <laughs> here's what happened. So Thursday night, I'm going back. This all happened Friday. Thursday night, I'm at a card game. Yeah. There's no thinking about seatbelts and upcoming court dates. But one of the guys playing in the game is, uh, and I'm, we're acquaintances, he's a defense lawyer. And uh, I said, well, look, I got, you know, you being a defense lawyer, I got a case coming up. And he's like, what, what about? So I kind of told him the case. Yeah. And uh, he said, I'm sending that prosecutor a text right now. And so I think he was kind of, because they, they battle against each other. They know each other. Yeah. And uh, so he sends a text un, unsolicited by me. I didn't know what he was texting. And I think he was kind of kidding around like, you're going to lose. Old Jace is going to get you or whatever. And so this guy came back with something to the effect of, no, he will lose. <laughs> and so... uh so what the guy we call the counselor at the card game, he's like, well, why don't I just set up a meeting and y'all work it out? I was like, hey, if he wants to meet, I'll meet. So the next thing he tells me is he said, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. He said, I'll be there. I'll show you where to go. I was like, well, you tell him I'm coming. <laughs> this so, sounds like wide earth at the yeah, end of it. <laughs> so I drive up there. and Did you uh, say, and hell's coming with me? No, I left that okay, part out. All right. That's a wide earth tombstone. <laughs> and uh, so I meet you know, the card player out in front. We go through a series of, you know, Whatever you do when you go through the courthouse, you know, yep. metal, detectors, metal, detectors metal detectors and officials. You and didn't have any weapons on the duty. People are looking at me like, is but he. What was the charge? <laughs> well, <laughs> hang on, Dad. So we go into this guy's office and we sit down, which I was surprised that my buddy is staying with me, which is a key element in the story I'm fixed to say. So the counselor. The card game counselor has yeah. I have not retained this guy in any way. We were playing cards the night before. 
However, does he lose to you quite regularly? No, he's a pretty good. He's player. pretty good. Okay. And so I just uh, wonder if he's paying off a debt or something. No, he's good. So we, uh, he said, "What's your, what's your, what's your problem?" So, uh, so I give my version of the story. I mean, I'm a man of integrity. Look at my record. There's no skeletons in the closet. That's that was where I started. I mean, you'll look up my record in the last forty years. It'll take you about two seconds, and you're not going to find anything. One moment, 20 years ago, I got a ticket for evading a red light. So I went ahead and told that story. Yeah. I've told it here The newspaper before. story. No newspapers in the newspaper bin, so I kept going. I didn't fight it because technically they were right. I should have turned around and got back in line, yeah. but I just kept going. Boom. Got hammered. So then I go through the gate, uh, the case, and I said, here's the biggest problem I have is the statute that the guy quoted, the law officer, was not correct. I said, I was honest about me having my seatbelt, but he was not honest in quoting the statute. It's, it's not in there. I was like, so I'm a man of integrity. I just don't think that's right. And if and if you're listening, what the what the issue was? Jace had the seatbelt on, but it it wasn't crossing over his chest. It was but under sit, his arm. That, statue, that is a incorrect assessment <laughs> of what happened. So, objection overrules. Uh, objection, object, your honor. That, <laughs> it was okay, over well, you, my uh, torso, but it was not over my shoulder. It was under your shoulder, I over will, the torso. I actually, for my case, I took a picture and I I showed it to the. To the prosecutor. Maddie, do you have this picture? Sir? Maddie, I will send these two the legal way. We'll, we'll get that up on the screen for so, you. So, Maddie, we have uh, evidence we're introducing into this uh, yep. proceeding. And I introduced it to, to the prosecutor. Well, when he cranked up, after I, he said, are you finished? And I was like, <laughs> yes, sir. Uh-oh. This doesn't he sound gave good. <laughs> his case, which was a preview of what, he would have what done. he's going to do. Yep. And about, I guess it took about five minutes into it, I thought, I'm fixed to lose. Because well, his it, question to it, you was. It was a withering barrage. And I, to, to, to be fair, the smoking gun was when he asked you, ha, have you read the owner's manual of your own vehicle? That was part of his argument. He had about three or four arguments. He said, here are the facts. He said, you were wearing the seatbelt improperly. And I had made a point in my presentation that there weren't any studies that I could find that showed the difference in if someone has it under their shoulder, while fastened, or on top of their shoulder. Well, he produced a study. So that was the first thing. He had this study, and there were six people that whoever did the study deemed would have survived if they'd have had it over their shoulder. Now, look, when, when he said that, my friend who's sitting beside me he leaned over to me and said, that's inadmissible. <laughs> so, because it was, you know, we're, we got a subjective study. So I kind of said, well, you're producing a study with six people? That sounds and he's like a like, small sample. He looked at me with, kind of felt like Tom Cruise and uh, Jack Nicholson in the uh, You the can't firm. handle the truth. No, you he was truth, like, if we truth. can save one life, I think it's worth doing it. Sir, you can't handle so the truth. He went Luke 15, which, am I going to argue with that? No. No. So I was like, well, I'll so have he to. He actually used a Bible verse on it. No, I was oh, just okay. thinking <laughs> Luke 15. I've been saying, that we got, if he's doing that, then this man is good. Yeah. So then he said, I have your owner's manual. This is point two after he had the study. Uh, point two, uh, uh, I have your owner's manual. You, do you drive a 2000, you know, 21? Yeah. Well, it says, he had it highlighted. It says, do not wear your seatbelt under your arm. It says that yep. in my owner's manual. Yep. And I was like, huh. He said, have you not read your owner's manual? And I said, evidently not. <laughs> And he's like, it's not my responsibility or the state's responsibility for you to know what's proper and what's not proper. So it was a really good point. Yeah, good point. And he had the study with the six people. Then he had a video that I watched, a doctor saying he had had a patient come in and the seatbelt was under his arm, but it 
ripped through his vital organs in, in the crash, mm-hmm. which my response in the moment was, well, that makes me not even want to wear a seatbelt if it ripped through his vital organs, you know? And he's like, he wasn't wearing it properly. <laughs> so after all that, uh, I was like, all right, well, you should have briefed the law enforcement. You should teach a class because if he would have made these types of arguments, there wouldn't have been any kind of problem. But this you'd guy's have paid cool. the 50, You'd have paid the $50. Well, wait, we're $50. getting to that. Because <laughs> the law officer also said the ticket was 25 which was another deceiving statement because it was 50 <laughs> So at that moment, <laughs> at that moment, I really was impressed with the prosecutor. And he also said, because when I said about my character, and I gave him a little review over what, how I've been invo- involved with supporting law enforcement, mm-hmm. not just in the state. I talked about two years. I went to the local prison here, and I said, now, look, I was out there sharing Jesus, but I was also helping your job because I was saying in a very loud voice, stop breaking the law. <laughs> and so he was like, well, we appreciate all that. However, once that ticket was issued, and this is the case I give, and, and he, he made a strong statement. He said, I have prosecuted this type of case many times. Which is why he was so, uh, that was my question to you. How did he know so much about this? But exactly. he, he's done it. Okay. And then he said the key line, and he said, and you're going to lose. <laughs> well, when he said that, my acquaintance fires back and says, no. <laughs> No, you're not. He looked at me first and said, no, you're not. And he said, let, let us be clear. And I was thinking, us? I changed teams five <laughs> minutes ago, and you didn't get the memo. He said, let me be clear. You just couldn't take it And anymore. I'll make this PG, because I just went through a big speech about being a man of integrity, yeah. and now here's my defense counsel. <laughs> that you it didn't was hire. like, we're, we're not going to put up with this manure, <laughs> and we will go to court and we want an apology for us even being here. And he's like, I'm going to go get a court date. So he got up, and I was like, no, I'm paying the ticket. He was like, no, you're not. We're going to get a court date. So he he leaves. And so then this prosecutor said, where'd you meet this guy? I was like, I made him at a card date. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> I said, well, he's fired, and I didn't even hire him. I was like, I'm going. You know, the hardest thing about firing him is you didn't really hire him. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really hire him. So we start talking, and he's like, look, Jace, we, we know that you have a voice. And he gave me this really passionate speech about you have a voice, because I went on this big deal about click it or ticket. I said, I clicked it and still got a ticket. You know, and he's like, well, you need to tell people, shoulder it or shoulder the fine. <laughs> I mean, That's I was clever. like, oh, yeah. okay. Because he's like, he convinced me if they see you without your seatbelt. Over your shoulder. Over your shoulder. They're going to give you a ticket. And I, I was like, now nah, let's be honest. And they're doing it because... They think it's healthier for you. It's not like well, exactly. I and mean, he, that, he convinced me. Yeah. He, he believes in it. But I was like, well, this is why he won me over. And, and after my lawyer left, <laughs> he was like, I get it. I watched the footage. the The law officer could have done a better job. It, he didn't take up for it. He's like, it was very confusing. He was misquoting the statute. He could have done a better job. He's like, but once it gets here, and you. Because he's like, you admitted it. I was like, well, that's what I have a problem with. Because he's like, we got you on tape. You you said I didn't have it on. I was yeah. like, well, I was being honest. He's like, well, that hung you. When, you. when you admitted that, then you need to pay the fine. And he's like, we're not going to let you off just because you're famous or yeah. whatever. But you do have a voice. And so now you can educate people. And I was like, well, I was, I was ignorant of the law. I said, if you watched the footage, you saw my sermon about Hebrews. And he said, yeah, I found it comical. Because I said it was an accidental sin. He's like, but I don't care if you did it on accident or not. I believe it. So you are coming in town, Al, in a few days, and I have decided that these gold backs that I hold my hand right here. Mm-hmm. 
will not be in plain sight. They will be hidden. <laughs> I will you be. St- stole my, you stole my silver. I'm taking the gold. <laughs> I'm going to be searching for the gold backs, and uh, they they come from Alpine Gold. And here's the deal with them: you can start earning a competitive return on precious metal leases that allow investors to protect against inflation while earning a competitive return at the same time. You won't find many similar offers. Every other precious metal IRA is lacking this. That's why Alpine Gold offers gold leases that pay you in gold. Everyone is eligible to start with returns up to 3.5% a year. Alpine Gold now offers members the ability to enroll in their lease program directly on the UPMA account portal for gold coins, goldbacks, which Zach has there, which I will be looking for, and silver. The goldback is the world's first Physical, interchangeable gold money that is designed to accommodate even small transactions. Goldbacks do not need someone else's approval to spend. They do not specify where they can be spent or what they can be spent on. They're anonymous, so there's no need to know who you are to spend them. For the first time in human history, you can spend physical gold on small transactions, whether you're buying a hamburger or doing a remodel on your home. This solves the 2,600-year problem of small coins with spending gold. Alpine Gold is proud to offer the industry's best pricing for goldbacks, an inflation-resistant currency that is made of gold. Buy, spend, or grow your gold holdings with goldbacks. When you buy 100 goldbacks and lease them, Alpine Gold Exchange will give you five goldbacks on your first lease payment. Payments occur one month after your lease begins. Limit one payment per person. So we hold several goldbacks, and we encourage you to check them out and see if they're right for you. Learn more about goldbacks by visiting alpinegold.com. Use the promo code UNASHAMED to receive free shipping on orders over $200. That's alpinegold.com. Use the promo code UNASHAMED. Check them out. So at this time, my... My friend comes in. He's like, court date, December 5th. We're, we're on. I was like, no, I, I was all, all. He's like, no, we're winning this. This, this is going to happen. I was like, here's the biggest problem. I said, what's the date? I was like, that's during duck season. He said, no, I put it during the split on purpose. I was like, but on, in the split, I hunt. <laughs> Somewhere else. <laughs> and uh, so I was like, that's. My hypocrisy leaves once I got to give up duck hunting or a duck hunting trip to fight this battle. I was like, and I don't think I can beat this guy. I mean, he even convinced you in his argument. Well, is, is I, that what you're I, I believe it is subjective. It's back to Tombstone. Back to Tombstone. Remember what what uh, Doc Holliday said at the end? My hypocrisy only goes so far, <laughs> and we yeah. found the end of yours. Yours is du- you're not going to miss the day, Doc. Yeah. Well, because then the, my counselor was like, no, he's just smoking mirrors. He's like, the law is on your side, Jace. And I was like, because it's subjective was his point. Mm-hmm. This, there's, mm-hmm. this is open He's probably to, right. You probably could have won. And that's why the prosecutor said, well, if we, I'm not opposed to making the law with more clarity. I mean, he, he seemed like he was playing a team player. He's like, but you throw in your owner's manual, you throw in the studies, and you throw in the fact that they can't see that you have your seatbelt on, and that which is really a big problem for them. I was like, I'm all about that. If you wanted to put in the law, it must be visible. Well, then you would have them wearing it over your shoulder. Right. So there, I, there's my speech. So I, so I just said, look, I would fire you, but I didn't hire you. I'm going to pay this fine. Yeah. And he's like, don't do it. <laughs> so I take off. Get directions to, I have to go to another courthouse. Yeah. I walked, you know, three or 400 yards. I go in through another metal detector. I go in there. I'm here to pay my fine. But, but then I still couldn't help it. I said, I'm paying the fine, seatbelt violation, even though I have my seatbelt on. <laughs> <laughs> I did say that. <laughs> and so she said $50. I was like, $50? He said 25 <laughs> Another. I was like, I'm going back to court. And the woman really thought I was serious. And I was like, no, I'm just kidding. But still, he did say 25 So I give the $50. As soon as I got the, gave the $50, well, a woman who looked like she was in charge of something walked in the room and said, uh, okay, did he pay us $50? And she was like, yep. It's like, we're going to give it back to him. We're going to take this off your record. 
and you have a good duck season. Well, then I was like, you won, Jay. <laughs> That's what? called winning. What just happened here? Winning. I said, did, did you lose or did you win? Well, I lost and then I won. But you got your money back. So then I couldn't figure out what just happened. And you and you weren't sure if you should say anything because when somebody the tells upper you. upper echelon at that courthouse had had a meeting. I think here's what they're going to do with you. Here's what I think. Zach has a different theory. Here's what I think. And because, because at some point I called my, my counselor friend and I was like, what just happened? And he's like, wow, what, what happened? I was like, well, they gave my money back and said, go on your way. And he's like, well, we won. Congratulations. (laughs) Good cop, bad cop. (laughs) I was thinking, who's the good cop? And he's like, oh, you were the good cop. I was the bad cop. We we, we got him. And uh, I, I couldn't figure out what he was I've talking about. I've never heard of the case where the guy's mm. like doing all this stuff and you never even talked to him. No, you don't even know no. he's going to be there. <laughs> no. <laughs> should make a movie about this. So, uh, but my theory is, I think once I admitted that they had a case and I was really impressed with the prosecutor and I thought, okay, this is this is something that he believes in, and, and he believes this is not properly wearing your seatbelt. He has the studies. It is in the owner's mind, you know. He made a good point that if the officer had told you what he said, you'd have just said. The officer you know. should have said the, the statute says that you must have it properly fastened, and this was improper. If he'd have just said that, fine. But don't quote something that does no. not apply and and try to. Hide and say that's what it says. Right. It doesn't say that. So, because I thought he was being dishonest. I think now he just don't, doesn't know. Right. I was like, well, you need to educate it. So, my theory is once I humbled myself and said, y'all are right, they said, okay, that's all we wanted to know. Yeah. If we see you, we're going to pull you over. Tell all your friends, use your voice to tell people, we will give you a ticket. Wear the seatbelt the- over the show. So it's not about the money. Now Zach had a had a another view of that, which he's probably right too. What was your view, Zach? Because we're still holding court here on Unashamed Nation. I'm gonna yeah. So, so you gotta verdict. keep in mind, like like I've done a lot of stuff with Jace over the years, so I kind of know the back end of some of his dealings, right? And I know what it would cost to get him as a spokesman for your cause or for your brand or whatever it is. And what what I determine is is they have retain Jace as a spokesman for their campaign and they paid fifty dollars for it, essentially. <laughs> so they got Jace. I, so, so they got him for about fifty bucks. They got they got the celebrity that endorsement. Jason working cheap these days. Yeah, they, that's, uh, that's what I said. That's well it actually I mean. didn't cost me fifty. It cost I mean it was my fifty to start with. Yeah. So Jace, I have a simple question. Yeah. Would you do it again? Well I drove down here and I have my seatbelt over my shoulder the entire time because I just don't want to, you know. Well, here I got a question for you. Who, who among among us, and also our people watching in here, who has ever read your owner's manual? Just, I'm just curious. Has anybody here read read an owner's manual? Zach, have you ever read an owner's manual to your vehicle? Only if I'm looking up like a specific trying to find a thing, right? right. So, so there you go. Know. It was, uh, you know. Looking back on it, because we have to move on, uh, I would do it again because I think it wasn't clear. It was about integrity, and uh, I do think they should make the law. They should provide a little more clarity. I really do. Yeah. In in the law, how hard is it to change that? I I think all they should do is that it must be visible. That way, it would always be on your. Well, who knows that this will not do that? This may because you had all this happened, and you've talked about it. Because we don't want them wasting their time, so I think that would be a good enough law, you know. So, I mean, a part of me, when the original idea about seatbelts came out, you know, it was a big personal preference thing. It's my body, I can do what I want, you know, that kind of law. And I think that's still the underlying tension of it to this day. I mean, we've all basically adapted and do it, but I think it... Early on, and in somewhere deep down, it's still a little bit of a freedom well, issue. Being the law, man made law. I mean, it is a law now, but I'm just saying, deep down, we're kind of like, you know, it's my life to choose, but 
Well, right. You know. Well, here's the spiritual application of that story. Because I think they, in a clever way, because somebody had a meeting about this somewhere. But it was a lot like coming to Jesus, you know. Because in this case, I broke the law, even though it was accidentally. And we go through all this tension and arguing and a lot of man hours and all this. And then I finally just thought it's not worth it. I humble myself, said I'll pay the fine. And then all of a sudden, here comes just redemption, grace. It's grace. It's like, <laughs> you're free to go, and here's your payment back. We'll take care of it. And then I felt a lot better then about wearing my seatbelt on top of my shoulder. Yeah. So there you go. It was so grace turned, wins. Yeah, gra- grace wins. Well, our won. next podcast, we're going to have a guy on that wrote a book on grace, and this would have been a great, you're exactly right, this would have been a great story in his book. They weren't going to let me off. That's just because it's over. Had I not... You lost and you won. ...humbled myself. You yeah. Know, they, yeah. They wouldn't... If I wouldn't have paid that fine, that we were going to court, and then I was going to have to miss my duck hunting trip, uh-huh. when I'm not... That sacrifice, that cost is too great. Yeah. On that. Some judge was going to have to make the... He was going to be in the court. And if you... Here's the thing, Jazz. The money wasn't that big of a deal the whole time to you, but... If you had gone to court and lost, you would have had to pay court costs. So that would have turned into two hundred and fifty plus dollars. Once you go into court, if you lose, you have to pay the court costs. In other words, you got to pay for everybody's time that's yeah. in that courtroom. So you stood to lose more. By the way, if you're just in for the ride, but you're not, you have a driver, and you're just sitting. On his right hand side. Are you asking for a with friend? Their <laughs> I, with their sunbelt. With Belt on. I, I reach over and I get it and I put it on. Yeah, you, you're supposed to wear it. Yeah. It, so that's asking for a friend. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying. I mean, would they get you get me if, if I was riding they along would. with him? Maybe they could. Legally, you're supposed to have one on too. So in the front seat, it's still not a law in the back seat. Their goal is right? to protect well, that's the right. driver. I would think it would it would go the beyond and protect. The passenger also. Well, I've got an idea. Read the owner's name. <laughs> uh, so. You know, I may actually, if I can find my, take a, take a you, you've you challenged me to take a gander at my Wasn't well, me. I mean, you know, you got these guys, they, yeah. they've they heard all this before. Right. And that's what struck me. And it, it was a Maddie's pretty. has got something up here. It was a pretty good idea. So. In Louisiana, all drivers and passengers must wear a seatbelt or be properly restrained in a child safety seat, regardless of their oh, seating wow. so position. Does that include the back seat too? We're making the world a safer place. Yeah. One seat belt. So you, time. yeah, you are not properly restrained according to your own owner's manual. That's where they got me. That's where they got yep. you. So, but even though <laughs> my counselor, who he's like, wins a win. He doesn't care how we won. Yeah. He was like, we would have won. <laughs> no, but I like your spiritual application that you you lost, but you win because you receive. Mercy and grace. So it not, didn't end up. I won, they lost. It it didn't end like that. It it ended. It ended with a. I, I thought pretty 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 amazing. Well, and I appreciate part. your being open, days to his arguments and listening to him. That was good. That was. I was impressed yeah. with the guy. Yeah. I, I thought it was reason enough. You don't want to have this fella up battling against you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was very prepared. I mean, I thought I was prepared. Yeah. No. I mean, I just got. <laughs> because this was the over. only time you've ever done this, but he's done this a yeah. couple of times. And I couldn't blame my defense counselor because I didn't hire him. <laughs> he was just sitting there watching. <laughs> and but, he just showed up. And then when he talked, he made it so intense <laughs> that I was embarrassed. You know, I was like. Yeah, you're like, called. I'm not with that guy. Wait a minute. <laughs> This That's guy. not what I'm saying. Don't speak for he me. He broke out in rudeness. <laughs> but I think that was a play by him because right. they battle each other all the time. Yeah, and they're, that's what it they're used to. It wasn't anything that. personal, but he was just like, no, you, you, we're fighting this. Yeah. And it was so funny to me. We weren't laughing because I was intense, and it wasn't funny in the moment. But yeah. I look back on it. It's very funny he, to me. He kept whispering in my ear, but in a volume where he heard it. <laughs> 
When a guy's like, you're going to lose, he's like, no, you're not. That's inadmissible. He can't prove that. Smoke and mirrors. I mean, it was just little. And I mean, the I was like. whisper. I like. <laughs> he was saying it for his benefit, but it was like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm telling my whispering client. in my ear, like, at the voice I'm talking now. Like, no, you won't. Welcome to the rules of America. Oh, man. Yeah. But just... there was a beauty in that somewhere in America where you have people represent you. You have the right to representation, and they, they're they trying to enforce the law. And, I mean, you saw it work out. And they came out with a way that they thought was better yep. to get their message out. So There's, there you... a, lot of, there's a lot of, uh, including in the book of uh, Ephesians, there's a lot of verses about obeying the law oh yeah and we're and we should always try to i mean law is law is typically good i mean the prisons are full yeah yeah in every direction right well you have to have it been better off if he had been taught as a young person all the way up you obey the law yeah well if jay said not gone in there he went in with confidence none of y'all, none because of y'all, you're none a law y'all. keeper by nature i mean none you of y'all, y'all ever ended yeah. up in court except on this little caper well, and he didn't argue uh, my record, nor did he he argue for the law officer because he watched the footage. And I was I was like, if you're going to defend that, I probably would have kept going. But he didn't. He yeah. said he could have done a better job, which and, was and, honest and, on his part. Well, right. He's like he, he could have done. It was it was not clear. And so, because I was thinking, if you won't give me that, you know, I, I just didn't didn't. I wasn't clear what he was saying. I'd never heard that. And then when I looked up the statute, didn't say that. So yeah. moving on. All yeah. right. So we're wrapping up Ephesians. Yeah. Let's just kind of tie a bow on it. We got a, a couple of segments left here in this podcast. We got a guest coming next time. I thought we'd just kind of do a little bit of wrap on it. We, we finished the text the last time that uh, we were together and we were talking about prayer. I, mean, I felt like when we finished, we could have probably done a whole other podcast just on that. And maybe we will someday, uh, just about the nature of prayer. Because it was interesting. I think it came out, but I, I, I've thought more about it since we recorded last time. And, you know, there is something uniquely special about that communion time with the Father, Son, and Spirit in prayer. And sometimes that includes other people, too. We had some, last time we recorded, we had some guests here who she's battling cancer. And so dad, you prayed after we quit recording. And there was something, there's something powerful about that, about that for them and for us and for the almighty. And I think back to that Romans eight passage where the Holy spirit, basically it says, Paul said he interprets for us into divine language as we're human beings. And so there is something you're talking about a, a weapon that we don't think about, you know, as being a weapon, but it really is because it's invoking the communion of the deity into everything that's going on in our lives. And so the more you do that and have that ongoing conversation, the better it is. And even when you get together with people, you feel that power of it. You know, when someone prays over somebody, it's, it's very, it's a very powerful yeah. thing. Well, I've been studying ahead in Colossians, but even in Ephesians, when we talked about the different relationships, and you see this phrase come up a lot in Ephesians, and it's a lot in Colossians also, this doing God's will, find out what pleases the Lord. You remember Ephesians 5 and verse, I think it's 10, uh, 9 and 10. Yeah, five ten says, and find out what pleases the Lord. Yep. And then in 6, uh Verse six, where it's like, and when he was going with the servants angle, you know, and we talked about that, but it's like we serve, we're like servants of Christ doing the will of God from your heart. Yeah. And when you combine that with knowing Christ better, that was his prayer. Yeah. It made me realize, you know, when you look at your relationships, I mean, if you ask me about my wife, I know my wife better than anyone else on this planet. I mean, even her parents. Yep. We've actually been together longer than she was with her parents. Yep. And so when you think about that, you find out what she likes. I, I know what she likes and, you know, what she doesn't like. But, I mean, I can give you detail after detail because that's, that's what a loving relationship is. And part of 
a healthy marriage is you do things sacrificially because you know it pleases the other person. Yep. And so when I applied that to God and getting to know Jesus better, that's what really stood out to me. It's like in any loving relationship, knowing someone better and wanting to please them and him, and I mean God in his complex nature of what you said, you know, we have his spirit. You, he, he gets pleasure from us surrendering to him. Yeah. And it's kind of a different take than what most people view as God is like he's up there with a gavel waiting for you to mess up. No, he's, you're especially going to see this in Colossians. It gives him pleasure to extend us grace because of our relationship right. that we have. And uh, Good point. Yeah, it's just very profound to me how personal this got when you study the whole book. And you're looking at the big picture, Jesus at the right hand of God, and as we surrender and humble ourselves, kind of like what I did on the ticket, yep. all of a sudden it provides clarity and, uh, and just thankfulness that, okay, they're, they're, they're wanting to be open-minded about this thing, you know? Uh, even in this case was an accidental mistake, but it did make me look back also at the old law. Can you imagine if that was still the system? Yeah. Where you, I mean, read the book of Leviticus. If that's, if that's where it would have stayed, can you imagine? The difference is that you know, my son said this to me just this week. He said, man, it seems like God of the Old Testament is a different God. I said, no, not at all. But he was reading through these through that old law. I said, you got to remember what Jesus said um, in in Mark. Whenever he was in, he had to reinterpret the law for the Pharisees when they were talking about marriage and divorce, and and they said, well, Moses allowed us in the law, basically allowed us to divorce our spouse, our wife, for um, just by giving a certificate of divorce. And Jesus said something so profound there. He said, actually, <laughs> you you missed the point of the law there. That was actually a concession that God gave you because of your hard hearts. It was never the intent of the law. And so I think when you understand like what, what did they do with the law is that they, it was all external keeping of the law, but it didn't bear fruit. So when Jesus in Mark 11, he rolls up on that fig tree and he, which, and he curses it. And he said, cause it, cause it had the appearance of life because it had the leaves on it, but it didn't have any fruit. It may you never bear fruit again when that's a, there's a whole lot to that. But when we get to Ephesians six, I think that helps us understand what Paul means when he says praying in verse 18 at all times in the spirit, to pray in the spirit is different than just saying a ritualistic prayer. It's, it's more than just, I'm going to give the appearance of, of a prayer and I'm doing the ritual of the prayer. I'm paying the homage, doing the thing, you know, whatever it is, it's more than that. What praying in the spirit is to your point, Jace, it is connecting with the person of God and it's, it's connecting with the Holy spirit and, uh, and, and having the Holy spirit, allowing the Holy spirit to shape our thoughts. The, it's the second Corinthians or first Corinthians chapter two is we have the mind of Christ now through the spirit. So his thoughts become our thoughts his will becomes our will. His desire becomes our desire. So to pray in the spirit is it really is to look inward and to say, give me the fruit of the spirit. Thinking about that, that, fruit, that tree that didn't produce any fruit in Mark 11. No, that's not the tree that Christ gives us. Christ gives us a tree that actually produces fruit and it is the fruit of the spirit. And that happens primarily through our interaction with the Holy Spirit in prayer. And with all prayer and supplication, it's it's conversation. And it's the thing about Jason's illustration: how the conversation is what ultimately solved the issue. Think about all the people that break the law and then don't deal with it, and then then they're on the run yeah. from the conversation that can fix the situation. So it's the same thing in any relationship. It's the same thing when people have distance. I thought about when you were describing the Old Testament, Zach. I thought about David. You know, and he went through that, you know, couple of year period where he was on the run from God. And he broke every law uh, that was there, laws that should have he should have been killed over by, by the statute. And yet what did he do in, in Psalm 51? He had a conversation with God to say, you know what? I have sinned. I was wrong. There are consequences. I realize that. But all I can do is ask for your mercy. Well, he did that in that old system. 
So it shows you right there that there was a pathway to forgiveness even way back then. I had a thought, you know, because what I was trying to tell my defense lawyer when he would say, like, this is inadmissible, you know, because he was just trying to win and he, this is what he does. He's defending. Yeah. The person, and by any means, right. necessary. Hey, if it's inadmissible, it's inadmissible. But I was like, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not trying to win. I'm just trying to provide some clarity on this because it's too confusing. And so I was, I kind of agreed with the guy that I, not kind of, I agreed. I should have read my owner's manual. I was shocked that that was in there. Yeah. And, uh, and even the part about, you know, the studies, I mean, maybe there's something to it. I had, I hadn't found it. I had a couple of uh, listeners sent that they didn't send me the actual study, but they said, I've read studies that said it's, you know, so there were but, some. But even that, when the guy said, I said, well, I looked it up and couldn't find it. And he said, I found that in 10 minutes. And of course, my defense guy was like, 10 minutes is an eternity on the internet, you know, which, <laughs> which he was right. You know, I was like, if it took you 10 minutes. To find that searching. <laughs> We're so, busy, sir. <laughs> so, but it made me think of this passage, and uh, it actually goes right into what we've been talking about. In 1 Timothy 2, in verse 1, it says, I urge you, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in, a, in authority. I mean, he was talking about earthly kings and authorities as well, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. And I actually think we had a peaceful resolution here. This is good. And this is goes in with what we're talking about and pleases God, our savior who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. And this next verse is what I wanted to get to, because really I've always viewed Jesus as the ultimate lawyer and he is. He's the he's our lawyer between God and man because of this verse, First Timothy two five. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all men, the testimony given in its proper time. You you combine that with remember first John two one and two, when it says, if anybody does them, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. But I just thought it was interesting that it says this, you you being, you know, praying and providing, having a thankful heart and providing intercession, even for those with authority, it pleases God, because he wants us to live peaceful and quiet lives. Yeah, I had a sermon that I preached years ago, uh, or a class I taught, I can't remember, but where basically I had Jesus in the position of everybody in an American modern courtroom situation. You know, he's the defense attorney. He's also the prosecutor of the case because he's perfect. He's the judge because ultimately he makes decisions. If, if Jesus he's even had, us because he represents us in the witness box. Jesus because, had appeared... During the talk that old Slick there, <laughs> even when, he when took they back to your old name, even had their their argument, if he had had Jesus there. Would it have helped? Well, he did have him there, so I Based guess based on that text <laughs> you just read. I mean, I was conscious. But I'd rather Jesus be on my side. <laughs> I was conscious was of how I was conducting myself, but I had a weird partnership here, <laughs> and. Uh, that you didn't it, really ask. It wasn't so much about winning to me as it was about really finding the truth yeah. and and how can we make the world a better place where we don't have well, this. Well, and I told you this before. I, I, with I, seat belts would be a healthier. Well, I, I think re- everybody agrees with that, but but it, I got. We had a lot of people saying, yeah, he just needs to pay the fine. But I, I was respecting you guys because in our system, in the American system of justice, Jay's exercised all of his rights that he has as an American citizen to do what he did. And and at the end of the day, he made it right with the state, which you have to do. I mean, the, the, the old deal about just running out on it and having a bunch of stuff, it's going to come back and bite you. They unveiled, too, the fact that they weren't after the money. They were actually wanting people 
Yeah, that you was the for. most impressive thing to me. That's what shocked me. Yeah. Because I think they thought, okay. It, we're, we're after the money and no matter well, what. Well, I think they were concerned that they would come across as just because I'm famous that they let me off. That was not an option. So they made that clear. They, I mean, they knew who I was and didn't care, which is fine. I didn't. Th- I, that wasn't which, why which I should was, be that way. That's oh, right. I was supportive of that. I, and like I said, we've said all along, it's not even about the money with you, Jace. I've seen you give a hundred dollar bill to a kid, you know, that clean your golf clubs. Just oh yeah, you wanted to bless him. So exactly, it's not. It wasn't the even the dollar amount. It was what was there. Yeah, I, I really was uh, personally convicted by. I just felt like if I'm going to get a ticket based on something that's deceitful i'm gonna fight that you know if you're and 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 that prosecutor actually agreed with me he's like he should have done a better job of saying what the problem with this is right uh because it it looked bad for him to quote a statute and say that's what it says and that and that it doesn't say that and that was back to my point about how conversations provide clarity and clarity brings things to to resolution. Yeah. I think that's the exact same thing. But I, but I, I'm not, I want to say this, I'm not throwing him under the bus because the way the system works and, and he, he provided some clarity on this, you know, they're out there. He couldn't see the seatbelt, which was frustrating. So, so it's like I either didn't have it on or I was wearing it improperly. Right. So I was going to get a ticket no matter what was said. And you, you, you see what I'm getting at? Right. But from the prosecutor's uh, point of view, he's like, okay, he could have done a better job. But that's over. You admitted it. Right. The facts are the facts. Yeah. You're going down. Right. So it's like that's you can Which, make Which, by that the case. way, is what law does. <laughs> that's the yeah, nature yeah, of law. Exactly. Well, it, our, our, a good question for you uh, for the audience is: Are you sad or are you glad that this conversation is over? <laughs> or mad? <laughs> or mad? Or mad? <laughs> or mad? You could be one of the three. All right. So we got a couple of minutes left. I was I was flying thirty six thousand feet. And this was my postscript on Ephesians. So I want to give this so we can officially tie the bow on it because our next time we get into a study, we got a guest on the next podcast, but we'll be in Colossians. So here's the thing, Ephesians 1.17, that we would get to know Jesus better. I feel like, Jace, after we study the book, that's the, that's the best line that really is the theme. And it wouldn't have been mine going into the study once we were through. So that's my key thought. So here it was, the Ephesians 1, 3 through 14, the plan, the price, and the pledge. I know it's alliteration, but that is Jesus and the Holy Spirit. For our redemption, transformation, glorification, it's Jesus and the Holy Spirit. That, those first few verses, if you miss that, you miss everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Ephesians 1, 15 through 2, 10 was then the proceeds of that for us. What, what, what does that mean to us when we know Jesus and the Holy Spirit? We have intercession with the Godhead itself. We have power that comes from him, and then we have grace, which we'll talk about on the next podcast. Ephesians 2, 11 through 22 is the peace that comes about because of that, and that's that connection and unity that we were just talking about. And he talked about Jew and Gentile, but in the text, we talked about that with any divided parties. It yeah. can be brought together. All humans can come together. They can come together. Ephesians 3, 1 through 21 are then the proceeds that happen as a result of that peace. And that was new revelation, new purpose, new confidence, new intercession. All those things were in that text. Um, then you, here's the thing in the last three chapters. He talked about unity. As a result of that, he talked about lifestyle that we got into, what that looks like. He talked about submission. And then he had three illustrations, marriage, family, and then our work situation, whatever that is. And I would say relationships. Re- yeah. Any relationships. And then, and then 6, 10 through 20 was the battle. Uh, that's there because there is a battle ongoing and that and then we looked at our enemy our armor and then ultimately prayer which is the ultimate weapon so that's my kind of wrap on the book and i would say it's noteworthy i've heard this many times but it's true all that weaponry that god provides that in essence is jesus you being in jesus none of them were designed for your backside this is not, yeah. we move forward, we stand and we move forward. Great point. Declaring the gospel. Which and means we're not running away. We're not running away. So uh, being in Christ is synonymous with being used by God to make his presence known. And you can't do that by putting a bowl 
over a light or hiding out. I mean, and so I think that's a profound way for us to realize that. That's great. All right. Well, that's it. We're out of time. The uh, that's I would say it's the last you'll ever hear about Jason's case, but knowing us, I'm sure it's going to pop up somewhere in the future. But it has been settled. So thank you, Unashamed Nation, for all of your opinions. And there were many, uh, but we love that. And we love you guys. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.